the best way to explain DNAD is first of all, it is a charity. I always start there because I think this is a not for profit. I think it's an incredibly unique position actually that we're in and something that a lot of people don't realise. And that we represent absolute creative excellence around the world. But on top of that, the way that we do that is through what I guess we call sort of a virtuous circle and it's this ability to help young people or people that wouldn't normally get an opportunity to um, participate in sort of creative careers or in creative excellence to sort of become part of beco become part of the network and to kind of set them off in the right way and that goes the whole way through your career so at any point in your career you can come to DNAD and get energized and refreshed and learn new things and you know get advice and get inspired So I had heard about DNAD when I was at college in Sydney, although we didn't have sort of very close ties back then because it really, you know, had such a sort of British heritage and this was longer ago than I care to admit. Um, but certainly as soon as I moved over here I realised how important DNAD was and had the opportunity in, I don't know, it must have been the very early 2000s maybe to judge a student award and I just fell in love with it. I mean it's such a an amazing thing, the, the, stu the student awards, it, both in terms of the, you know, the briefs and the work, and then also, it's the best award ceremony in the world. Everyone is so excited. Every, the, the energy, you know, there's this incredible energy there that you sometimes don't get at more professional award shows where everyone's being very serious and a little bit jaded. Um, and that enthusiasm kind of swept me away a little bit, so I just tried to do as much as I could with the student awards and actually on the student program. I've always really been keen on giving back as much as, as possible and so I've tried to do as much as possible with DNAD to kind of help to help young people or to help people that needed a little bit of a step up I guess in their career. This is going to my third year um, and I am now the president which is super exciting um, particularly following on from Neville. Um, it's quite big shoes to fill I have to say he's done an amazing job really focusing on what we do around education and what we do around helping people that just otherwise wouldn't get access to creative careers, you know, divert, finding people from diverse backgrounds, um, helping people who kind of otherwise wouldn't be able to, to get into the industry and sort of lobbying for some of the really appalling stuff that's been happening in education, which is stopping people from the UK actually taking that first step in their career. So as DNAD president, uh, I guess I do a couple of things. The first one is sort of help guide where DNAD goes for the next 12 months. And I'm going to be traveling quite a lot as we expand internationally to make sure that what we do and how different we are to other organizations that seem like us, you know, uh, is explained properly, I guess, um, when we're sort of going to new markets and, and making new connections. So some of my plans or well, the plans that we've got for the next 12 months. I think, number one, we've done a lot around solidifying what we do around lifelong learning and education. We've got loads of new courses coming on board, which are really, really exciting in terms of professional development. Um, and I think we could do with having a bit more energy, um, bringing a little bit of sort of freshness um, into the organisation, and particularly because we're doing so much to help young people start to actually change some of the events so that they feel more accessible, not, not just to young people, but to young people or the people that currently aren't quite sure how they relate to DNAD or not quite sure how they can get involved in DNAD. So we've got such an amazing board at the moment, we've got such, so many people who are sort of doers and so many people who are really inspiring to, to the industry and to, and to young people. And I want to release them to be able to have more of a voice, I think, within the organisation and, and out into, you know, out into the real world. So um, you'll be hearing a lot more, hopefully, about the kinds of things they're doing, the kinds of places that they are and what inspires them. We're in a really, really good place now to kind of look to the future and to look at what the next 50 years is going to be. And so to experiment with new things and to, to try out maybe a slightly different view of what creativity is. A lot of people, um, since I've, you know, people knew I was taking on this role, have said, well, how I'd love to get involved in DNAD. 
how do I do it? And I think at the moment we don't give people enough opportunity to get involved. They can become a member, but, but really how can they find a voice? And so I'm wanting to yeah, really open up that, that conversation, whether it's sort of suggesting you know, ideas for what DNAD should be doing or the kinds of events that we should be having or um, opportunities for younger speakers to actually talk at some of the events as, as sort of part of a, a bigger a grouping of events or um, experimenting with going to different places so stuff just isn't always in London anymore and I think there, there's a lot of opportunity there to explore over the next 12 months really make it feel like a much more of a collaborative organisation. It might be something financial like I could buy a ticket to the award ceremony but actually pay for an extra ticket for a student um, or it could be more opportunities to somehow help through New Blood or help through the foundation but I want to make sure that people there are some great creative directors and you know people who are awarded members that are generous I want to give them some opportunities to to give back in the ways that they kind of feel like they want to give back. My favourite my favourite award is the white pencil absolutely without a doubt because uh, because of what it stands for you know and it has such a power to bring people around doing good so I, I absolutely love the white pencil but I think there's some really interesting new categories this year I'm quite fascinated to see how they go around technical innovation um, that might take a different approach to creativity I think and I think that they'll be they'll be interesting to watch this year Again, one of the exciting things that the president gets to do is to look at how we, um, how we approach the annual. And I think we've had some really interesting um, annuals in previous years. Rosie had her 50 co covers for her 50 years. Sankey had the most um, environmentally friendly annual ever. I think I'm quite interested in doing something maybe a little bit scary and a bit more collaborative. Um, but I haven't spoken to anyone about it yet. So <laughs> watch this space. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for the most part, you know, you see, you, you discover work now through all sorts of other channels, through DNAD or through other blogs or through Twitter or whatever. So you often don't get a chance to, to say to people, you should enter into DNAD. Being a president now, hopefully there'll be more of an opportunity to actually sort of encourage great pieces of work. Yeah. I hope I can look back in a year's time and feel like people understand the goodness in what it is that we create and the fact that we are here to represent the, the industry on all levels and I think that for me would be so satisfying for people to understand we're not just an award show we don't ta we don't just take people's money and it doesn't just disappear somewhere that actually everything that we do goes back into helping people further their creative careers around the world I think that's that would be that's super important and also that people look back on my year and go that was quite good fun wasn't it actually DNAD's got a bit of a sense of humour now and maybe they don't take themselves quite so seriously anymore and I think we can stand for creative excellence and still you know leave with a smile on our face so yeah that's what I hope.